Hi guys. Um, so I'm going to talk today about uh, some of the techniques we can use in the creation of your uh, collage here. Um, I have another video where I discuss the um, specifics of your design decisions, uh, how to decide where to put things and all of those kind of things. Um, so I am not going to uh, talk about that at the moment. Um, but what I am going to talk about here are um, some of the tools in uh, Photopia that we can use uh, to manage all these layers. Okay, um, So in my design here, um, just so I can make this very clear, uh, everything that you're seeing here in my design uh, was made in Photopia or, um, or using pictures taken from the internet cut out and assembled together in Photopia. Okay. So, um, if you, you know, the, the other video that I posted does talk about how I made these decisions about like where to arrange things and how things line up. Um, but, uh, what you'll see here, if you take a look at my layers, first of all, is that there are a lot of layers. Okay. Um, I don't know. There's probably a, I, I haven't counted, but there's probably 30 or 40 layers here altogether. Um, and uh, it can start to get a little bit busy. So uh, do notice that uh, many of them have names, okay? Uh, you can rename any layer in Photopia at any time by simply double clicking on its name, okay? So that's click, click, not click with two fingers, but click, click. Um, and uh, you can call these things anything that you want. Uh, so I have uh, hand layers, I have kitty layers, I have diamond layers. Um, I have one layer that has my star. Um, let me just go through these one by one. So uh, you see I have my hands, which are four separate layers. I have my two kitties. I have four diamonds, again, four separate layers. Um, in this case, I have assembled those four layers together into a folder. I'll talk about that in a moment, but it is indeed four separate layers. Um, I created the star. Um, and then in the background, you're going to see a lot of photo layers that are using different blending modes to give you that interesting, rich, um, uh, sort of see-through sort of effect. Um, so I have, uh, several different layers that have graphics and images. Uh, here's the halo that I put on his head. Um, couple of adjustments to colors. Here's my main character. Here's my two little kitties. Um, the stripe I have in the background, my glowing effect, uh, a couple more uh, stock charts, and then uh, the shapes that I used. So I have a circle shape, um, a texture layer, which is this uh, sort of stock uh, ticker image. Um, this layer is a gradient stacked on top of a gradient, and then another shape, another shape, a color, a radial gradient layer, and then lastly, a texture, okay? Um, so if each each of these layers individually uh, is not all that interesting or not particularly exciting, but when you start combining them together uh, is when the cool things start to happen. When we start building on top of each other all these different interesting layers, we start to get the, these sort of rich surfaces that have all these different interesting things going on. Um, the key to making these work, uh, as discussed in a, again in a previous video, I talk about how to make these backgrounds. Uh, but the key to making this work is right here: these blending modes. Okay, um, some of my layers are set on normal, so like this circle, for example, is a normal blending mode. Um, this one is set on linear dodge. This one is set on color. Um, do not worry about what mode you've chosen or what it's called. Um, there's not like a right mode to choose for any particular layer. Uh, the reality is that I've made each of these decisions about each of these layers just by trying out the different modes. So um, this one's set on multiply, for example, but I would almost certainly have tried this one, color dodge, overlay, soft light, hard light. Um, you know, and many of these are cool. Uh, it's very possible that I would have chosen differently, um, but uh, for this particular layer, I chose multiply, for example. Um, so I'm not telling you specifically which layer style to choose or which um, blending mode to choose. You can make those choices on your own. Um, 
but uh, just be aware that that's how I got this rich, interesting looking background. Um, so let me turn everything back on uh, and then you'll see how all these pieces fit together and uh, how it works as a whole image. Okay. Um, now, something that I want you to keep in mind is that this looks really complicated. Okay. I know there's a lot of layers and it looks really, really complex, but the reality is uh, it's a pretty simple concept. I'm using symmetry to make sure that everything matches on both sides and I'm slowly, slowly, slowly evolving the design. Okay. So when I first started this design, it didn't look anywhere near this interesting. Okay. I was, uh, I, I have adjusted and moved every part of this design multiple times. Um, you're not going to get a perfect design on your first attempt. Okay. This is super, super important to remember. If you, if you get nothing else out of this class, if you just take this piece of information, uh, it will help you for the rest of your life. And that is you're not going to get it right on the first try. Okay. You are not going to be successful on your first attempt at doing this. Think about it. This is the first time you're trying something like this. Um, the odds that you're going to get it right on the first try is like almost zero. All right. What are the chances that, uh, your first attempt at making something like this is going to be great. Probably not that good. Um, the first, my first attempt wasn't nearly this interesting. I ended up, um, changing pretty much everything you see here. I, I've tried different arrangements of hands, different arrangements of cats. I've added more circles, less circles, added shapes in the background, changed the position of the figure, added more figures. This thing has evolved continually over the course of a few hours of work. Okay, um, So I started out with the basic idea of symmetry, balance, and uh, contrast. Okay, But then uh, the evolution of that process is what makes it work. Okay. Um, so with that said, let's talk about some of the tools that we have available. Let me get rid of all these layers. Um, and I'm just going to work with just this guy here. Um, so I don't need any of these things. And I don't need these. Okay. So I have here uh, a picture of the guy that I'm using for my um, design. Um, so just a couple of things that you should keep in mind. First of all, um, I when I have multiple tabs open, uh, or when I open a picture in Photopia, uh, whatever kind of picture I open, um, let's just say I open this. Um, whenever you open a picture, sometimes people freak out. They say, I opened it and my, my, my project disappeared. I don't know where it went. Uh, your projects live in these tabs right at the top of your screen. Okay. Um, so this is still within Photopia. Now these other tabs, these are my other browser tabs. Um, they are uh, they're separate. They're not part of Photopia. These tabs down here are my open documents. Okay. Um, I can take a layer from any picture and I can move it and drag it and drop it into another tab. Okay. Uh, when you put a picture into another document, um, it's going to make its own layer. All right. Uh, keep in mind that whichever layer is on top, that is the layer that you're going to see in your design. Okay, so uh, in this case, I see the guy um, because he's on top. Okay, if the uh, tree image was on top, I would only see the tree. Okay, um, now uh, as you start arranging your elements, okay, so one, once as you start working towards a, a full, interesting design. Um, what am I going to do? How do I even start this process? Well, let's let's talk about it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to use one of these cats. I'm going to drop this cat over here and uh, use him in my uh, demonstration. So uh, so I've got a cat here. Um, I'm going to turn him off for the moment. Um, so I've got a cat. Um, I just want to get rid of that little bit right there, which I'm not crazy about. Okay, so I've got this cat hanging from uh, whatever, hanging from a rope or something. Um, so uh, I'm probably going to want to make copies of my um, objects. Uh, at, at some point in my design, I'm going to want to have multiples of certain objects. Okay, So uh, let's talk about how we work with those multiples. Um, so to make a copy of a layer, I simply click with two fingers, two finger click on the layer, and then I can choose duplicate layer. Okay. Um, when I duplicate it, you're not going to see anything change because the, uh, the copy is right on top of the other one. So if I want to see it, I have to move it over. Okay. Remember your move tool is right up here, the arrow tool up at the top. Okay. Um, 
now would be a good time to mention as a reminder, um, the move tool is also how we resize things. So if I want to resize uh, the elements on these layers, I just check the, the box up here for transform controls and that allows me to resize my layer. Um, as a reminder, if I hold the shift key as I'm resizing it, it'll make sure that I don't squish or distort my, um, my image, which is important. Um, if I do not use that shift key, it's possible to distort the image and end up with something that looks a little weird. Uh, so hold that shift key as you're resizing, and that way you'll make sure that uh, whatever you resize is the, is the correct proportion. It doesn't get messed up, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna undo that because I don't actually wanna resize it at the moment. Um, so I got two cats, okay? Uh, let's just say I wanna make a design that has, um, I don't know, let's for fun, let's just say I wanna make a design that has eight cats going across the screen, okay? So I got two cats here. Um, so I need to make six more. What am I gonna do? Uh, well, I can just copy that first cat six times, right? Uh, or uh, I could select both layers, okay? So if I hold the shift key uh, on my keyboard, I can select two layers at the same time, okay? If I now right finger click, and, and say duplicate layer, uh, it'll duplicate both of them, okay? So now I have four cats, okay? If I do that one more time, I will have six, okay? So now I have six cats. Now notice, uh, they don't fit properly, so I need to move them all over, okay? So normally what that would mean is I have to grab the first cat and move him over, all right? And then grab the next one and move him over, and then grab the next one and move him over. Okay, but that's that's ridiculous. I don't need to do that. Um, remember, I can select multiple layers at once. Okay, so if I hold the shift key, I can select all of them and I can move them all together. Okay, so now they work like a, a little dance troupe all together. All right, I can move them wherever I want to. Um, once I have them all selected, uh, I can also click transform and I can also transform them all together. So if I want to rotate them all at the same time, there you go. They all work together as a group. Um, I can also uh, resize them all bigger or smaller as a group. Okay. So if I wanted to say create a, uh, a wall of cats, watch this, um, I can very easily create uh, 12. Look at that. And now if I take my 12 and duplicate them, uh, I now have 24. All right, and then guess what? You see where I'm going here. If I select all of them and duplicate it one more time, uh, I now have 48 cats, okay? Um, so I'm using the power of multiples at the same time. I'm using multiple uh, selections to move everything all at once, okay? So I now have a cat army, okay? I have an army of cats. Well, what if I decide that uh, I, I need to change all of them and, and uh, I'm getting tired of dealing with all these layers. Look at all these layers. I have 48, 49. Oh, I don't know why I have 49. I guess because the first one is number two. So I have 48 cats here. Um, this is way too many layers. I cannot deal with all these layers. Okay. So uh, down here at the bottom is uh, my best friend in this situation is this little folder icon, okay? Down right here at the bottom, you see a little icon at the bottom of my layers and it says new folder, okay? Um, if I select all of these layers, so again, hold the shift key, uh, select all of them, all right? They're all highlighted. Now, if I click my little folder icon, it collapses all those cats into one single folder. Okay, so this is all my cat layers. And if I expand the folder out, you can see they're still all in there. They're still individual layers. They, they, they still all live on their own layer. Um, so if I decide I just need to get rid of one of them, I can get rid of one of them at any time. They're still separate, um, but they all live inside this folder. So this folder now will essentially work like one big layer. All right, so I can select the whole folder. Um, I can change the arrangement. Um, I can, uh, you know, stretch all of them out. Um, I can make all of them upside down if I want very easily. Okay. So this is really important when you're working with large numbers of elements all at once. Okay. So in my design, for example, I have a, a single folder that has my diamonds in it. 
okay? Um, I could have also made a single folder that had my four hands in it, for example. Or I could have put my hands and my diamonds together into one single folder. In fact, I think I will. Um, I will just put these right there. Okay, so now this single folder has all my diamonds and all my hands, okay? Just like that, very simple. Um, and that makes it really, really easy now for me to modify or alter those four layers all at the same time. If I decide that I want to rotate them and have them, um, you know, be in a different position in my design, I can do that really easily and I don't have to move each one separately. Okay. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. And, uh, uh, if, if any part of that didn't make sense, just please pause, rewind the video and go back to an earlier point in the video if you need to. Okay. Um, a couple of other things I want to talk about. Um, before the end here. Um, so I'm going to uh, put my guy here right in the center, all right? Uh, and I have his layer on top of the uh, cat layers, okay? Um, so I want to discuss two, actually, I'm not going to use this for right now. I'll come back to that later. I want to talk about two other things. These things are, are review, but hopefully they will be helpful. Um, in my design, you'll see that I have some shapes in the background. Um, I want to talk about drawing shapes. Um, Shapes are a, a really handy thing in Photoshop and Photopia. Uh, the shape tool lives over here. You're going to see it as a rectangle. Uh, the default is a rectangle. Um, but if you hold down your button on that um, icon, you'll see there's other tools hiding in there. Okay, So the default tool here is a rectangle, uh, which will be filled in with a color. Um, in this case, it's red, but I can pick any color that I want. Um, and uh, it'll just draw a box. Very simply, uh, the fill here is is set to empty, so it sh didn't show up. But if I set it to the color, it'll show that color. Okay, um, so I can draw various different size boxes, any size and shape that I want. Each one over here gets its own layer. Okay, um, as a general rule, um, keep in mind that if I hold the shift key, it keeps the size locked. Okay, in this case, if I hold the shift key, it draws perfect squares. Okay, so rather than uh, uh, drawing rectangles of different sizes, in this case, it'll draw a perfect square if I hold that shift key, okay? Um, other shape tools, again, if you hold down the button, you can see the other shape tools. I have an ellipse tool, which uh, is used for drawing ovals and circles. If I hold the shift key, it'll draw circles, okay? Um, and lastly, uh, this guy right here, there's also lines, uh, but right here, this one's really fun. It says parametric shape. What the heck is that? So I wanna talk about that for just a second. Um, here's what a parametric shape does. Uh, it allows you to draw various different kinds of shapes uh, that you can uh, customize to your own needs, okay? Um, so for example, what I'm talking about up here is right up here at the top, um, Currently, it's set to polygon. Okay, a polygon is just a, a shape with a certain number of sides. Okay, so in this case, it's five sides, which is a pentagon. Okay, if I wanted to make like a septagon, I could do so like that, or an octagon, or a nonagon, right? Um, just by putting the number of sides in there. Okay, um, I can also, uh, let's go back to five because pentagons are fun. Um, I can also uh, change this little guy right here, corner radius. What the heck is that? This determines uh, how sharp the corners are. So if the corner radius is set to zero, it'll make like perfect sharp corners. Let me turn off my cat so you can see a little bit better. It'll make perfect sharp corners, okay? Um, if I turn that corner radius uh, up a little bit, it will start to curve those corners. So it's kind of a rounded uh, shape. Okay, which is a little softer, um, uh, a little less severe. Okay, um, up here at the top where it says polygon, uh, there are other options such as stars. Okay, let me uh, get rid of these layers and let's draw some stars. So uh, I can do a star with five sides. In other words, five points. Okay, um, and I also have, I have two settings up here. I have inner radius, which essentially determines how long the points on your star is. That doesn't look like a star at all. Um, so if I turn the radius up really high, it turns it like almost into a circle. It's kind of a fat star. Um, if I turn that inner radius down a little bit, you'll see it. Um, if I turn the inner radius way down, it'll give me like a really skinny looking star, um, almost like a starfish. 
Uh, and if I go really low, uh, it essentially just makes lines. Okay. Um, the other setting in there is uh, corner radius. So again, this is like the, the sharpness of those corners. Okay, if I turn this all the way down to zero, you'll get a very, very sharp geometric looking star. Uh, if I turn the corner radius up, you'll have a more rounded, softer looking star. Okay, so the in combination, those two shapes uh, or those two settings, you can get just an infinite variety of different types of shapes. Uh, you're really limited only by your own um, imagination here. Um, so like this is how I created uh, the glowing um, halo effect behind his head. Um, I, in this case, used a, a star. Let me turn this back on. Uh, I created a star that had, I don't know, like 20 sides, something like that. Um, so it looked kind of like that. I put that behind him so it shows up behind his head like so. Um, and then that uh, that was my glowing head effect. Um, so that those are the custom shapes. That's how you use those. They're a lot of fun. I encourage you to try them. Uh, I used those shapes to create a number of things in here. I did that to create the, um, the glowing sort of light effect out of his head uh, as well as all the circles in the background. Okay. Um, Keep in mind um, a number of things that we can do that, with these layers. So um, we can do things such as change the blending mode of these layers. So I'm not stuck using just normal layers. Um, I can use you know, any combination of these different uh, blending modes to give me different sort of effects. Um, I know you can't really see too much there. Um, we put a color here that's a little bit less bold. There we go. Um, so there's there's uh, uh, many, many different types of effects depending on how you um, use the blending modes together. Um, and uh, it's, they're, they're always interesting and fun to play with. Uh, so please don't hesitate to experiment with those uh, blending modes, okay? Um, secondly, we also have layer styles. So we use this on our previous project. Uh, this is where you double click the layer and that brings you to this layer style box which allows you to um, apply special effects to that layer. So things like uh, outer glow. So when I turned on the outer glow it is um, literally creating a glowing effect uh, from my star. Okay, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, there are other things like we can do drop shadows. I'm probably not gonna be able to see that very well uh, because of my dark background, but um, there is a shadow there. It's just really hard to see. Let me turn off this background. There we go. Um, so there is my drop shadow effect. Um, and uh, that can be really fun to play with as well. Uh, that looks kind of cool, just like that. Um, so there's my drop shadow. Um, I can do things like bevel and emboss. We did this on our pizza project where we wanted to make things look three-dimensional. Um, you can absolutely do that on any of your designs that you want. Um, and uh, it's just really up to you to decide exactly how you want to use those layers together. Um, in my finished design, I didn't do a whole lot of um, layer styles. I have a few things. I have a slight glow out here. Um, I have a couple of layers that have a glowing effect or a, or a shadow effect. Uh, my hands here have kind of a blue glow on them. Um, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of layer effects or layer styles. Um, mostly what I have here is, is created just by stacking all those layers and then playing with the different shapes. Um, so last thing that I want to talk about is um, just one more uh, option for uh, a way to think about this. Um, let me get rid of going to get rid of everything here at this point um, except for one of my cats so I'm getting rid of all my cats except for one and where did he go I lost my cat there he is okay so I've only got one cat here um, so I want to talk a little bit just at the very end uh, about how I can use uh, an image like this to create more interesting abstract shapes um, so what if I wanted to say, like, make a, uh, a cat-shaped flower? Okay, I want to make a cat flower. A cat flower, what are you talking about? Um, well, let's see. Um, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to, I feel a little bit bad doing this, but I'm going to take this eraser, uh, and I'm just going to erase this, uh, this arm off this cat. So he's just going to be a uh, 
a cat with a head and a body, but uh, we don't need that arm to be sticking up over there. Okay, so we're just going to use that part right there, and that's okay. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this cat, and I'm going to, um, you know what? That looks weird. I'm sorry. Let me get rid of that. Just leave him like this. So we'll, we'll, we'll let him keep his arm for the moment. Um, so I'm going to use this cat to create kind of an abstract pattern. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, putting him right at the top and in the center. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to make a copy of him. Okay. So again, I right click on the layer, two finger click on the layer and choose duplicate layer. Uh, now I have two of them. Okay. Now if I grab my move tool here, um, I can move him around. All right. Um, but specifically what I want to do is I don't want to move him around. Uh, I actually want to flip him upside down. Okay. So I'm going to grab the top. Um, um, first of all, make sure I have my move tool selected and make sure I have transform control selected up here at the top. Okay. And I'm just going to grab this cat at the top and I'm just going to pull him straight down to the bottom like this. Okay. Um, and what I'm doing here is I am, uh, I'm taking a good look at the numbers up here at the top. Uh, so watch up here as I resize this. You'll see that those numbers show me the size of him. Uh, I want it to be at 100. So, so I'm looking at the height right here specifically, and uh, I want that height to be at minus 100. Uh, I could also just type minus 100 into the box. That makes a lot more sense, um, but uh, that works too. Okay. Uh, so now I got two cats, Okay, and one is an exact flipped copy of the other one. All right. Um, well, what happens if I take both of those cats, duplicate them both? Okay. So now I have a total of four layers you'll see over here. All right. And I just put my cursor outside the box and now I'm just going to rotate them around. So now I have four cats. Okay. Let's get them straight, shall we? I'm kind of looking at the middle there, looking at this shape right here. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to try to get them straight. Okay, so now I got four cats. Okay, let's do it again. Duplicate layer. Okay, now I have six. And uh, again, I'm just going to rotate them around. Okay, and let's do it again. Duplicate layer. Um, now notice, I, I'm saying duplicate layer, but I actually have two layers selected, so I'm duplicating two layers. Um, but again, as I rotate them around, uh, what I'm making here is sort of a uh, uh, an abstract uh, arrangement of these cats to create a single... Um, sort of abstract design, okay? Um, let me do it uh, one more time. I'm going to select all of them. Uh, I'm going to duplicate all of them, all right? And the ones that are behind, I'm going to rotate one more time, like so, okay? Uh, and th this one, I'm going to also uh, stretch it outwards a little bit, like so. Okay, so now what I've done here is I, I've created kind of an abstract uh, layered uh, design using these cats. I think this looks horrible, just for the record. I just want to point that out. This is not something I'd end up wanting to use for a finished design, um, but uh, for the purposes of my demonstration, uh, it'll be good enough. Um, let me just put a circle here in the middle just to kind of show you what I might use that for. Um, the shape should be all the way at the top. There you go. Um, so now I have this sort of like uh, uh, barraging army, halo army of cats uh, uh, emerging. They almost look like they're uh, they're like fight the power cats uh, emerging from uh, behind my image back here. Um, so this is kind of similar to what uh, the artist did in his original designs where he created these abstract patterns using flowers, uh, plants, whatever, um, to create these really interesting designs. Um, we can do the same kind of thing. It's just a matter of copying, duplicating lots of layers. Um, I took the obvious step here of putting all those cats into one folder. So now, uh, just like I showed you earlier, um, now that I have them all in one folder, I can move them all at once and I don't have to manipulate all these separate layers. Um, I would name this folder. I'd give it a name like cats, okay, just so that I can make sure that I can find it later on, okay? Um, so those are just some basic layer tools. Hopefully you're able to use those. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, shoot me an email. Um, the other videos that I posted go into more detail about how you make the decisions about your design, um, 
how you start working with your layers as far as cutting out the pieces, start putting them together. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced techniques, uh, but hopefully that is helpful. Um, best of luck. Uh, please, 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 if anything is confusing or isn't working, just uh, pause the video, rewind back to the part that's confusing, watch it again, uh, and if you have questions, just shoot me an email. Okay? Good luck.